Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to read and understand frequency tables. Specifically, we're going to take a look at an example with grouped data. We will talk about what grouped data means later in the video. Now, as far as frequency tables, they are a way for us to represent and display data in an organized and easier to understand way. Frequency tables show us the number of times something occurs in a data set. And that something can be a value, a range of values, even something that's non-numerical. So it doesn't have to be numbers. Whatever the case may be, we are looking at the frequency, the number of times something occurs. Let's jump into our example where we are going to take a look at a frequency table that is displaying this data right here. These numbers represent the number of videos released last month by a group of content creators. So a certain number of creators were asked about the number of videos they released last month. These are the results. Now this is raw data. That just means that this is the data as it was collected. It's not organized at all. So you can see it's difficult to interpret as is. A frequency table will help us organize everything and our table is right here to the left. Now the left column of the table, so this column going down right here, that's the number of videos released. So we have 1 to 5 videos, 6 to 10 videos, 11 to 15 videos, 16 to 20 videos, and then 21 to 25 videos. Now these groups are called classes or class intervals. Since we have these classes, these groups, this is called grouped data. So these are the groups right here in the videos released column. If we have a wide range of data and a lot of individual values, using groups helps us create a more condensed and manageable table. Depending on the situation and the data, writing each individual value could create a very long table. For example, for this data, we would have to go from 1 to 23. That table would be pretty long. So think about if we had an even wider range and more individual values, maybe hundreds or even thousands of values. So these groups allow us to create a simpler and easier to work with table. Now, as far as the right column, so this column right here, this is the frequency, the number of times the values in our data show up within these groups. So for example, taking a look and reading this table, how many creators released one to five videos last month? Well, five creators. How about six to 10 videos? Well, nine creators. 11 to 15 videos, eight creators. 16 to 20 videos, two creators. And then 21 to 25 videos, one creator. So you can see that this frequency table really helps organize and present the data in a more meaningful and easier way to look at than just looking at the raw data. Now let's answer some questions regarding the data. Starting with number one, where we have how many creators were in the 16 to 20 range as far as videos released last month? Here is 16 to 20 right here. So we have two creators. Two creators released 16 to 20 videos last month. So they were in that range. Let's move on to number two, where we have how many total creators were included in the data? Well, for this, we need to take a look at the frequency column and add all of those numbers up. So we have five creators, nine creators, eight creators, two creators, and one creator. So if we add those up, that's going to give us the total amount of creators. Well, five plus nine is 14, 
plus 8 is 22, plus 2 is 24, plus 1 gives us 25. So 25 total creators. And then lastly, let's move on to number 3 where we have how many creators released less than 11 videos. So less than 11, 11 is not included. So we are going to look right here. So the 6 to 10 and the 1 to 5 videos released. So we have 5 creators and 9 creators. So 5 plus 9 gives us 14 creators released less than 11 videos last month. So there you have it. There are the basics of how to read and understand frequency tables. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.